The challenge for us is this. So often we do the information thing because we want people to know the power of God's word. We want them to know how amazing Jesus is. We want them to know the cross. And then we send people out to innovate, to do more than we did. But you can't be what you can't see. They don't know necessarily how to contextualize it. And so we find, yeah, we get discipleship and we believe in discipleship making, but how many of us have seen it last one generation? A wonderful work that went so far. And I believe we need to look afresh at the imitation piece. Let me give an example. I was a foster child. I grew up in foster care from days old until I was six. Please don't feel sorry for me. It's wonderful, wonderful woman, gift from Jesus to me. Revealed the Father's heart in so many ways. But it's temporary. I learned lots of things that I needed to know. But I needed a father. I needed to stand at someone's shoulder. You see, I'm Nigerian background. I'm a Nigerian Londoner. You can tell from the voice, I'm not quite from around here. And um, <laughs> not quite from around here. Love it though. And um, the, the, the problem was, I didn't even know I looked like him. We reconciled at the end of his life, led him to the Lord. God did wonderful things, other story. But in the meantime, growing up, I didn't know what I looked like. I didn't know what, my, what it meant to be a Nigerian woman in our society. I didn't know what, um, that I was from a line of kings. I didn't understand my heritage. And because I didn't know whose I was, I didn't know who I was. Because I didn't know who I was, I didn't know how to be. I didn't know how to function. I needed to stand at somebody's shoulder to see. Because I couldn't, see, I couldn't be what I couldn't see. I needed an illustration. And I would encourage us leaders, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, will we allow someone to have access to our lives so that they can see from our lives what it means to share our faith, see from our lives how you spend money, see from our lives what marriage looks like, see from our lives what it means to raise kids, see from our lives how to heal the sick, see from our lives what it means to cast out demons, see from our lives how to plant and take risks and be radical for Jesus. Will our lives show that and illustrate or will we keep them from a distance and look good on a stage? You don't know how many spots I have up here. You don't know how much MAC makeup is on my face right now. You're far away. And if you're that close, my husband wants a word with you. But, <laughs> but, but it's a completely different thing, isn't it, from afar? We all look great from afar. We look wonderful from afar. But that doesn't disciple. It gives a wonderful illustration, maybe an inspiration, but it does not give imitation. It doesn't give imitation. Will we let people imitate our lives. And it's a horrible thought, isn't it? Because I don't know about you, but do I want everybody to see my life? Do I have a life worth imitating? The question comes back at me. And you know what encourages me is I think of Paul. I think of Paul who says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And I, I think of a man who has a brain the size of all our planets, but a past which is a mess who was a murderer, who went through houses, getting rid of men, women, and children, and getting them killed because they love Jesus. And he says, imitate me as I imitate him. I'm sending you my son who stood at my shoulder so you can see this way of life. I believe God is calling us to rise up and be parents. You know, when we think of the Celtic church, they had abbots and abbesses because they reflected the abba. And they led entire communities revealing to them in life and way what it meant to love God, what it meant to live for God, what it meant to be with God. We've talked lots about being a father, fatherless generation. I'm telling you from experience, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable when you don't know who you are or whose you are or how to be. But what we have in our hands, what we have in this opportunity, it is an opportunity is to lead in such a way that people will stand at our shoulder and realize the greatness and the goodness and the glory of our God.